I am so pleased that he has agreed to do this. He is a wonderful uh, and faithful pastor. I know you will welcome him uh, and show hospitality to him. And at this time, are there any other announcements? Cabe, come right on up. If you are able, please stand for our call to worship as we enter into the spirit of worship. If you'll please join me in the call to worship. I trust in you, O Lord. I say you are my God. My times are in your hands. Let your face shine on your servant. Save us in your unfailing love. How great is your goodness which you have stored up for those who fear you. Our hymn is number 140.
please remain standing as Cabe leads us in our prayer of confession and praise. Please join me in prayer. Almighty and everlasting God, in Christ you have revealed your glory among the nations. Forgive us of our sin and preserve in us the works of your mercy, that your church may preserve with the steadfast faith in the confession of your name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May God's peace be with you. Would you extend a greeting of peace and welcome one to the other. you to be seated and our praise team will lead us this morning.
Please pray with me. Lord God, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today, through Christ our Lord. If you're able, please stand, and Cave is going to come and read a passage from 1 Peter. This comes out of 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 7 through 11. The end of times is at hand. Therefore, be alert and of sober mind so that you may pray. Above all, love each other deeply, because love covers over all the multitude of sins. Offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve one another, as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. If anyone speaks, they should do so as one who speaks the very words of God. If anyone serves, they should do so with the strength God provides, so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To him be the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. This is the word of God for the people of God.
Well, thank you, praise team, and thank you, choir and Jim, for the wonderful music, as always. Appreciate it so much. Well, we're not in Psalms anymore. I've, I've chosen a different text for today, and it begins with kind of ominous words. The end of all things is at hand. And let me assure you, it's not all quite that bad. <laughs> It, of course, is referring to the end of the world and the glorious return of Christ, but uh, we are reminded that there are times of transition in our life, times of ending and new beginnings, times when we grow up and leave home and we graduate from school and move on to careers, and there are times when careers as we know them come to an end and pastoral relationships as we've known them come to an end. But in this passage, the Apostle gives us some amazing words of wisdom. These are words, I think, for both this congregation this morning, and these are words for me and for my family. It's really just four exhortations. I think there are four exhortations that are appropriate for us all. First of all, to pray. The end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be clear-minded and self-controlled that you can pray. This congregation needs to continue, as it has been, to be a congregation in prayer. When we looked at our discipleship plan of reaching and connecting with people and helping people grow and equipping them and sending forth the mission, the very center of that plan was worship and prayer. And that has been true for the last 12 years. We have been a people of prayer. We need to continue to be a people of prayer because... It's through our prayers that we connect ourselves with God, and it's through that connection that God does wonderful things in our life. Sometimes blessing things we have planned, and sometimes doing things quite to our surprise. But it's no surprise that throughout the course of my ministry, i found that during those times when I've been most faithful in prayer, God has surprised me in wonderful ways. And, and magnificent ways. Matt and Dana Riffle are here this morning. <laughs> Raise your hand so they'll know who you are. They were my lay leaders at my church in Seminole. I prayed a lot when I went to Seminole because uh, I heard that there were some kind of struggles going on in the congregation. I went there. I was a little bit nervous about that. It was one of those seasons when I really dedicated myself to prayer. And I remember, gee, I don't know, Matt, it was about our third week there. Matt was the lay leader. We really didn't know each other very well, but he called or I called said, could we go out to lunch? And we went to lunch at this little restaurant. It's kind of a family style restaurant. And while Matt and I were visiting, a young waitress came up and Matt knew her and he introduced her. He said, Alan, this is so-and-so. And and, uh, she actually brings her child to our church's daycare. And I said, really? I said, do you attend church as well? And she said, well, no, but I've been thinking I need to get back into church and so the Lord was just prompting me and I said okay is this a time in your life when you're interested in spiritual things and she said well it really kind of is and we got involved in a conversation I just asked her one question after another what her background with the church was what her experience with the Bible was did she really have a personal relationship with Christ and as I was talking you could see the expression on her face kind of melting. I mean, I could see she was in this conversation and the tears started coming down the sides of her cheek and she says, I want to know Christ. I don't really know him. And I said, have you come to a point in your life where you would like to know Christ in a personal way? I mean, there was no backing down now. And this is the the lunch hour. I mean, there are people that she's taking our order. There's people all around this restaurant. And I said, "Uh, could this be the day when you want to give your life to Christ? And to my shock, She got down on her knees right there at that table. Matt put his arm on her. I put my arm on her. We prayed for her. I led her in a prayer to receive Christ. She was just sobbing. You know, I looked over at her managers up at the desk. What in the world are these guys doing to my waitress over here? You know, it was like an altar call right there in in the restaurant. And... And she finally got up and I told her I was going to have someone follow up and bring her a Bible and do this kind of stuff. And she's still crying. And she said, okay, God, see, you wanted the cheeseburger and you wanted the, you wanted the steak and eggs. I mean, it was just amazing. But it's one of those things you can't orchestrate. 
You can't plan. You can't put it on an agenda. It's just God working. And when people are praying, I found God works in the life of individuals and God does mighty things in, in the lives of churches. We came out of that restaurant and again Matt and I didn't know each other very well. Got out of the curb and Matt looked at me and he said, I've never seen anything like that. I said, neither have I. <laughs> but I'll just tell you in the course of my ministry and the ministry is sort of like the guy in the wide world of sports who talks about the thrill of victory and the agony of defeat and in the course of ministry there's a little bit of each. But it's moments like that, when lives are touched and hearts are changed, that it really makes it worthwhile. Continue to be a people of prayer. You know, one of the things we started several years ago, and I hope this church will continue, is having a seasonal prayer emphasis. Remember what we came up with last Advent? It was a new one. Remember what our prayer emphasis for last Advent was? Does anyone remember? It's been a year. The partridge in the prayer tree. I love that. I don't know how we came up with that. We not only had an angel tree, we had a prayer tree. And, and Cheryl Cox put a partridge in it. We called it our partridge in a prayer tree. I would just, for, for me and Christy, for our family and for each of us today, continue, exhort us to continue in times of prayer. We need God's guidance as we go through times of discernment. We need God's guidance that we find through prayer. Secondly, he says in verse 8, above all, listen to this, above all, love each other deeply because love covers a multitude of sins. I've, I've thought about that verse over and over and over again through the years. Love one another above all don't just love each other, but love each other deeply. What does it mean to love each other deeply? We chose as the guiding verse of this congregation 12 years ago to be a community of God's people who do what? Live the love of Jesus. That theme has served us well in times of conflict, in times of trials, in times of discussions. We've been able to look to ourselves and ask ourselves the question, are we love, living the love of Jesus in our church, in our committees, <clears throat> in the community? And that theme has been the theme that has moved us forward as a congregation and enabled us to stay together through a time of disaffiliation and discernment when, quite frankly, a lot of other churches have fallen apart. Love each other deeply because love covers a multitude of sins. I've often pondered this verse and wondered uh, when it says, because love covers a multitude of sins, is it? Because I'm loving others deeply, I'm just having grace with their sins that my love covers the sins of others? And it may be some of that. Uh, because if I'm loving another person deeply, I'm loving them for who they are and the way God loved them. I'm overlooking a lot of their foibles and failings and loving them in spite of their sins sometimes. But then I've also thought, is it when I'm loving others deeply, that they're overlooking my sin? And I think it's some of that as well. And I thank you because every pastor has strengths and every pastor has weaknesses. Every pastor has moments when they shine and every pastor has moments when their light is not so bright. But you have loved me deeply and I thank you so much for that. And I want to just say a word about going forward and this, this exhortation to love one another deeply. This, this congregation, let's face it, we've been through a lot this last year. This whole issue of disaffiliation has not been easy. It's, it's brought out people with difference of opinions and different hopes and different timings and all kinds of things. It's been exhausting. It's emotionally exhausting. And we come to the point November 1st, that's next Wednesday, when it'll be officially complete. But then there's still a time of discernment as to who to reaffiliate with. <clears throat> And there's a process in place to look into that. But, but let's just face it, this has been a stressful, difficult time in the life of this congregation. 
And not only ours, but congregations across the state of Oklahoma and United Methodist Churches across the nation. And some of them haven't fared very well in this process. And in some cases, loving one another deeply is not the thing that's come to the surface. This has been an exhausting time. And then we add to it, oh my goodness, Sherry, can we count the list? We've had a rummage sale. We've had a, a craft show. We've had a, 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 what do you call it, spectacular. We've had co- we've had projects going on and on and on. And then in a month, Thanksgiving and Advent will begin. begin. You know, it's my experience that when I get worn out and stressed and tired, that I sometimes become short. Sometimes my sense of compassion to others uh, dwindles and sometimes my love doesn't flourish. But I would just say this congregation has been through a lot. God has brought you through a lot. God is leading you to a whole new day. But there are times when we need to just take a breath and we need to step back and we need to realize that we're exhausted and we need an extra measure of grace with one another. And as this congregation goes through a transition this next week, I would just encourage you, rely on God's grace. Take that breath. If you need some time to take some time off, uh, take some time off. Let God restore and replenish you. Don't let the exhaustion of this hour be the foot ground of the evil one to stir problems in this congregation. Don't let our exhaustion and tiredness and stress uh, be the field uh, where we get crosswise with one another, but love one another deeply. And know that by loving one another deeply, both our sins, I think, are covered and By loving one another deeply, we can cover the sins of others. We can cut them an extra measure of grace. Continue to love one another. And then he goes on, talks about verse 9, offer hospitality to one another. (laughs) And it says without grumbling. Grumbling, grumbling ruins the whole thing. You know, to be hospital but then grumble around about it, that that kind of, that kind of uh, doesn't have the same effect. But all in all, friendship evangelism. Friendship evangelism. Just welcoming people. Making people feel welcome and a part of this congregation. That's been the strength of this congregation. The people over the last 12 years that have joined this congregation have been people to say, well, in fact, I had one family tell me this. I went to nine other congregations in this worship and, and churches in the Sepulpa area. But when I came here, people greeted me. People made me feel like they wanted me to be here. They welcomed me. They took me out to lunch. They invited me to a Sunday school class. They welcomed me. Friendship evangelism is always the most vital, powerful form of evangelism. It always has been and always will be. Just reaching out, making people feel welcome. And making them know that we want them to be a part of our church family. I found out that so well when I was in college and I was sitting in an economics class one day and the young lady sitting next to me, and uh, this was before I met Christy, but this young lady sitting next to me said, uh, how would you like to have a free lunch? I thought, wow, this young lady I don't even know here is offering me a free lunch. What such a deal. I've got young ladies here at the college asking me out to lunch. She was inviting me to the Wesley Foundation. It it was a trap. (laughs) I said, well, okay. I went to the Wesley Foundation. It was a free lunch, but a guy got up and gave his testimony. I still remember who it was, Joe Madden, who became a, a deep college friend, shared his testimony of how Christ had changed his life. I thought, wow, this is a bunch of religious people. What is this all about? But they accepted me. A young man who was struggling with college and having high anxiety about the Vietnam War and all kinds of other things, didn't know anybody really, they accepted me and they invited me into that fellowship. The very next day, the director, John Collier, called, asked if I would come and visit with him. And it was a week later that I gave my life to Christ and the Wesley Foundation became my home for four years. 
and the place where I was nurtured and strengthened and discipled and, and given guidance, and the place where I met Christy in a small Bible study. That was, that's another story. I, I was in this Bible study with Christy for like seven weeks. I called and asked her for a date. She didn't know who I was. You know, I had made zero impression on her in this small group Bible. She had to look to her friend there at the at store and say, you, you know who Alan Schneider is? Oh yeah, he's coming to the Wesley Foundation. But it was just people accepting me, just loving me, just extending hospitality to me that drew me into Christian community. It was so important. Same experience when we went off to seminary and... Uh, just married we went up there the very first Sunday we attended North Park Covenant Church and the very first Sunday people came up to us said we've got a group of young people that have a have a fellowship in our home on Sunday evening would you like to come they took us in so hospitable so gracious and that became our church home for the rest of my time at seminary offering friendship being hospitable to one another without grumbling and then finally It talks about service. Offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. Each one should use whatever gift he has received to serve others faithfully, administering the grace of God in his various forms. Well, I'm preaching to the choir here because this is such a serving church. My goodness. The way this church is in service to one another, the way this church serves this community, it's, it's an inspiration to me. I hear about it as I go through the community. Oh, you're from that Methodist church. You're the ones that come out to the park. Or you're the Methodist church. You're the ones that do the coat drive. Or you provide the food through the blessing box. And the stories go on and on. Serving one another. And I have no doubt whatsoever that this church will continue to be a minister to one another and minister to this community as you serve one another. For Christy and and Beth and me, uh, for me especially, we're going to have to figure this out just a little bit. I, I will tell you, when I first went to Wesley in El Reno, from June of my appointment there to September, I did 26 funerals. That's, that's overwhelming. I was overwhelmed. And we had a person who had retired there, Reverend Burl McNaught. And he had retired a little bit early and he had taken a year off. He had kind of regathered, you know, had a year to kind of regather his spirits and such. And I said, Burl, is there any chance you would come on staff if you had an opportunity to this church and help relieve some of this load? And he came on staff and worked with me for seven years, mainly doing hospital visits and care visits, homebound visits, funerals. He did so many funerals, uh, he got the, his name was Burl McNaught. They, he got the nickname Reverend Burial McNaught. Uh, he did so many funerals. But he lifted the burden from me so that I could do some teaching and, and planning and visioning with the congregational leaders. And quite honestly, I have, in the back of my mind, thought there's going to come a day when I'm going to return that favor, when I'm going to give up being the senior pastor, I'm going to take take a step away from being a lead pastor, and I'm going to return that gift to some young pastor, I'm going to step into a congregation, and I'm going to be there to help ease their burden uh, with visitation and pastoral care and and, 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 and and free them up to do the work of visioning and teaching and stuff that they want to do. And I, and I don't want to belabor this this morning, but we are in strange and new times uh, in our church history through this disaffiliation. And, and we are in a season where the policies are such that 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 vision that I've had of of being in that role is probably not going to be fulfilled very easily because there are just tensions. Uh, There are just tensions and there's hard feelings over the disaffiliation between our United Methodist Church and disaffiliated churches. But I am praying that those tensions will cease. I am praying that somehow through it all, eventually... We will all be able to love one another and that that love will cover the multitude of sins that that have been committed on all sides. And there will be a time of healing. Uh, But in the meantime, as the Lord leads, I do hope to continue serving.
primarily through my counseling practice, Living Hope Family Therapy, and, and we're talking with the trustees and other church leaders about the possibility through the counseling practice, through Living Hope, to do some kind of partnering in ministry here at this church. We're just going to have to let the Spirit lead and take this time uh, a step at a time. But, but I believe that all of us will be able to continue to work and serve Christ and, and work together. And that is indeed my prayer as we go into the future. And so I would just say in closing... Uh, this is such a great church. Th this has just been an amazing experience uh, here for 12 years, and I thank you all for that. And today does mark the end of a season in my ministry, and it marks uh, the end of a season in the life of this church. But I am truly convinced that both for my family and for this church, there are new seasons still to come. By God's grace, there are new seasons still to come. Thanks be to God. Amen. I want to begin uh, with any joys that might be shared, and I, I just want to say it's a joy this morning to look out, and I'm not going to try to name everybody, because if I do, I know I'm going to screw it up, but, but people from, uh, from Hale Heights and Church of the Shepherd, and uh, people from Seminole, uh, ministerial colleagues who have been uh, with me in this journey for over 40 years, I thank you all so much for being here. I know there were others that were going to come, but uh, weather and health has kept them from doing so, but thank you all for being here this morning, my family, and I will be introducing some of them in just just a few minutes. Um, but I thank you all for being here. Uh, other joys, my goodness, we've had so many activities going on. Uh, there's a joy, Cheryl. <laughs> yeah, how about that? Hey, great. Well, I think it's going to be wonderful when uh, this is so full that we are forced into uh, going to multiple services once again. I think we're going to get there. I see that hand in the very back. I saw them. Yes. God bless you. They, I've got three generations of lay leaders here. <laughs> the, the Riffles from Seminole, the Holmes from here, and, and then, of course, Pat and Heather. So I th I've got at least three generations of lay leaders I keep these people separated. I don't want them to start comparing notes, you know, about uh, things that went on or activities. But thank you for being here. So gracious. Others, any other joys this morning? Over here. Wonderful, wonderful. We finally caught up with Sue Coons. She had been in the hospital for a week. We didn't know about it. And then she went to a skilled nursing. I'm not sure I can pronounce it. It's like C-R-A-E-U. It's right across the street from Hillcrest South. It's a beautiful facility. We've had others there. But pray for Sue. 
others who need our prayers this morning. Of course, we need to be... Yes. Wonderful. Thank you. Uh, others that need our prayers this morning? Let us look to the Lord. Dear God, we do give you thanks uh, for your abundance, your mercy, for the way you have led this congregation over the years and uh, the way you guide us into the future. Be with us in all ways. Dear God, we thank you for those who have been ill but who are now recovering, overcoming surgery and other illnesses. Dear God, we pray for our world situation, especially in the Middle East, that your mercy uh, would be there, that you would give guidance to the leaders of all nations and lead them in the ways of peace. We pray for those who have fallen victim to a terrible massacre in Maine, for those who are grieving and a community that's in shock. May your comfort be real with them today. And as we come to this time of Holy Communion, we pray that we will renew our faith, our life, our spirits with you, knowing that you are with us in every way and every time of need. And all this we ask in Christ's name, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As our ushers come, let us continue in prayer. Lord, bless our giving. Thank you for your abundance in our life. May all that we give be used to glorify and further your kingdom through Christ our Lord. Amen.
lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and a joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. And so with your holy people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise you and join their unending hymns, saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, and gave it to all his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is the blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us, as we proclaim the mystery of our faith, Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. O Lord God, pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. I invite the congregation to be seated. Communion in the United Methodist Church. Those who are going to assist, if you'd make your way forward. Communion in the United Methodist Church is an open communion. We invite all to come and receive the elements of bread and wine this morning. If you would prefer, we do have elements in sealed packages in the basket. And you may come and take one of the packages from the basket. If you are unable to come forward this morning, uh, you will be served in your pew. Just let the ushers know as they pass by. We will come and bring the elements to you. are the gifts of God for the people of God. Please, please come uh, as you're led by our ushers.
Our hymn is number 408, verses 1 through 3. Those who are able, please stand. I want to just say a few concluding words. And first of all, Beth, can you make your way up? And John, can you make your way up? Come right up here and join me. Squeeze by Uncle Bob there. I have been so blessed over the years that I have not done ministry alone. For us, ministry has been a family um, experience. And from the time that they were able, age appropriately, Beth has been singing in choirs and helping in nurseries and helping at vacation Bible school and other kinds of events. From the time that John was able, he was helping in the youth group and playing music in praise teams and helping out with the church facility with lawn mowing and all. It has been inevitably a family affair. They... (laughs) have done so well. There have been occasions when the bishop has called and said, uh, I have another appointment for you. And they had friends in the community. They had friends in, in school. And it's, it is very difficult on United Methodist clergy families uh, in itineracy. But in every community we have gone, they have plugged into the church, have served, and have been a part of the church. And I thank you, and I love you so much. In 1976, (laughs) Christy uh, left a job that she loved uh, at the Little Lighthouse to marry and follow me uh, to Chicago and has been with me in such an incredible way. There couldn't have been a more faithful, a caring, serving pastor's wife. She has just been amazing. And if I started in, uh, we could have a whole another sermon here today, but I love you so much. You <laughs> too. today to have uh, Reverend Father Bob Fellows with us and Katie. Katie is Christy's sister. Katie and Christy grew up in the Presbyterian Church. Katie married an Episcopal priest and Christy married a Methodist minister. Bob and I have spent our entire career trying to liturgicalize these two Presbyterian girls. (laughs) But uh, 
back in the 70s, and I can't remember when it was a deacon, I think it was when I was ordained elder. It's the tradition in the United Methodist Church that two elders, in addition to the bishop and the superintendent, lay hands on the candidate. And at that time, I wrote Bishop Milhouse. I said, I'd like to have John Collier, who was our college, champion, uh, college chaplain, a United Methodist pastor. And I said, would it be possible if my brother-in-law, who's a priest in Oklahoma with the Episcopal Church, that he might be the other elder to lay hands on me, and Bishop Milhouse graciously agreed to that. So Bob laid his hands on me and prayed for me at the very beginning of this journey, and I asked him to come today and to say a concluding prayer and then do the final benediction. I don't, did I get a microphone? Okay, is it on? Okay, here we go, Father Bob. Lord, we give you thanks for Alan and for his family and for this congregation that he served faithfully for many years, as well as the ones before this. So we pray that you will, God, God that you will be, that you will bless Alan and Christy, continue to bless them and Elizabeth and John and their family, and that they will in this congregation as it moves on into a new life also that will be will be open and be welcoming to others who will come to minister in this flock. We ask you to bless Alan and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with him and with Christy and Elizabeth and John for now and evermore. Amen. Amen. Okay. Thank you. Oh.